Okay. Take 10,000. This is Lauren with Lauren Watkins Art, and today I am going to be reviewing different types of pastel paper for you. I get, uh, I get asked all the time what type of pastel paper uh, someone should be using and if I have any recommendations and why I would choose one type of paper over the other and when and why. So I'm going to be reviewing um, six different types of pastel paper for you and kind of break them down to help you guys get a better idea of why certain papers are good for certain things and certain types of pastels and why others are better for other types of pastels. So let's jump right in. So our first paper up for discussion is the Cansimitance pastel paper. And I'm going to start off these reviews kind of giving some of the basic facts about them and then I'll go over the pros and cons and kind of applications of the paper. So I showed you a 9 by 12 pack, but this paper comes in a variety of sizes and it also comes in a variety of colors. Um, there wasn't a complete overview of colors in that pack because I've used up some of my favorite colors that are available. Um, this paper is pretty widely available. I've seen it in big box stores like Michael's if you're in the U.S. and and I've found it available in places on um, places like Amazon and Dick Blick um, if you're more uh, prone to buying it online. It's about the weight of construction paper and it has two textures, a more coarse texture like what you can see now and then on the other side it is a smoother texture. Now the texture on this paper comes from the rolling process. Um, it's not added to the paper. So with pastel papers they typically have um, two different types of textures added to it in the sense of there's a group of papers called sanded pastel papers where the texture added to the paper is actually glued onto it. Um, so think like sandpaper. You have your base paper and then they glue the sand onto it to create that texture. That is how pastel sanded papers are. Some of them use like a type of really fine sand. Some of them use plant cellulose and it's glued to the paper. This falls into the embossed category where the way they rolled the paper left texture. And you can even see like the texture is very uniform and there's like a pattern to it. That's from the rolling process. So that's kind of the basic facts with this. So what are the pros of the Cansimitance paper? I find that it's pretty affordable. It's one of the cheapest options you can find um, on this list. I like that it comes with a variety of colors. I find that, especially with like the embossed papers um, that aren't sanded, I find that I like them to have an undertone um, that goes with what I'm trying to paint. That's because most of these papers can't take like a wash of color, like with watercolor or with ink. And so to have the paper already toned helps a lot. And I really like the more subtle texture it offers. This paper I found is often also used by other professional artists for their final pieces. So I tend to use this paper more for sketching, um, but this one has a nice of enough of a texture and with it being acid free, um, you can use it for your final paintings and the ones you want to have framed and keep around, especially with it being acid free. So. I like that it has this flexibility of being inexpensive enough that you can use it just for sketching, but also being a nice enough paper and with enough texture and stuff that you can actually use it for your final pieces. Some of it just depends on what your preference is and how you paint. So let's go over some of the cons of this paper. 
And some of these are just personal preference. Um, I don't like that it's such a lightweight paper. Um, it tends to make framing a little bit trickier. You have to mount it to a board first. Um, I don't like that I can't do an ink underpainting or a watercolor wash underneath. But some of that is negated by the fact that the paper comes toned. My biggest drawback with this paper is that it can't take a lot of layers. I work in, um, with a lot of layers when I'm doing pastel paintings. And so I typically don't use this for final pieces because it can't take a ton of layers. Now I like that it can't take a ton of layers when I am trying to do um, painting exercises where I am trying to be less finicky and more brave in my painting. So instead of gradually building up layers, just knowing this is the color that needs to go in there or it's about the color that needs to go there. And so just putting it in and being more, I don't know, direct and concise with how I paint. Um, so I sometimes use this paper just in exercises to help me be more precise um, with my painting. Um, some other things, I use this for sketching and for like practice pieces when I'm trying to like brainstorm a painting. And I use this a lot for like if I'm doing like a portrait of someone, I really like this paper for that. Um, with the portraits, I often use the back side and I just use it with charcoal. Um, so that is the Cans and Mitons, um pastel paper. Um, you can see in the demo um, that I kind of left the background more unfinished and I chose to do that and on all of the pieces so you could see the texture of the paper. Um, another thing, uh, just as we're doing uh, these examples, the pastels I'm using are Prismacolor New Pastels. Those are the rectangular ones. Richardson's Hand Rolled Pastels. Those are kind of those big fat ones you're seeing me use. And then there's some pastel pencils. Um, there's Stabilo Carbothello and Giaconda uh, pastel pencils. And I have the same colors to pull from with each picture, but each picture I use maybe a different mix of those same colors. So here is the final piece using the Canson Mitons pastel paper. It's a great paper if you are wanting to kind of improve what you're working on, but still want it to remain affordable. This is a great option for you. Okay, so our second paper is the Strathmore 400 pastel paper. This paper is the most widely available pastel paper of the bunch, at least in the United States. And in the, for the most part, it is the least expensive paper you're going to find. Um, it's available in the big box stores like Hobby Lobby and Michael's. It's also available in places like Amazon and Dick Blick. This paper comes in a variety of sizes. The one I showed you at the beginning is a 9 by 12, and that's the most common size you'll see in stores. It also comes in a variety of colors, but the colors are lighter than the Canson papers. Um, they are an, a lighter value, and they're just more subtly toned, which isn't a pro or con, that's just a personal preference thing. These are also an embossed style of paper, so the texture comes from how the paper is formed. It has a more subtle texture than the Cans and Mitons paper, and it has, from what I can tell, it has the same texture on both sides, so it's not different on one side versus the other. It's pretty much the same. 
So what are the pros of the Strathmore 400 paper? I think the number one thing is that it's so widely available. Coming from a small town and having to drive to another city to even get basic art supplies, this is a big deal. Um, as a kid, I always was trying to get art supplies and I always had to wait until my mom would drive the 20 miles into the next town where the closest like Michael's and uh, Joanne's was at. And so I can really appreciate just having things accessible. I've seen this sometimes even at Walmart and having it available to you and being able to get it when you need it is really, really important. So many of my like art supplies that I've had to get over the years, I've had to order online, which can be frustrating if you need that thing right now. Um, another uh, benefit of this paper is that it's inexpensive. So you can create on it without fear of destroying this $20 sheet of paper. If you've ever like tried to use a really expensive piece of paper for the first time and you're like, I can only afford this one sheet of paper. I've got to make my masterpiece on it or I'll ruin it. It can keep you from creating and improving. And I am all for good art supplies, but I also love inexpensive ones that I can just create without fear. And this paper allows you to create and experiment and improve your, your skills on without fear. I like that it is toned. Um, it's similar to the Canson, Canson paper where you can't take a, it can't take a lot of layers and you can't do like ink or watercolor washes on it. So with it coming toned, that really helps in the process. These, the tones in this one are a lot more subtle, which is a pro or con and depending on what you're trying to do, achieve with your look. I like that it has a really subtle texture. I didn't really notice a difference in how many layers this could take um, versus the mutants. I thought they were fairly comparable on that aspect, but I liked how like subtle the texture was on this. And I typically use this one a lot for portraiture um, when I'm practicing like face drawings or body um, sketches and stuff and I really like the subtle texture on this especially when I'm drawing like pictures of kids or um, young adults where they don't have as many wrinkles or like they don't have as much texture on their face um, some of the cons with this paper is it's a very very lightweight paper um, it's only like an 80 pound of paper so it tends to it tends to rip easy if you're not careful um, it's not as durable um, so just it's just something to keep in mind it, I, I mentioned it earlier but it can't have a watercolor or like an ink wash or underpainting with like actual paint on it um, because it will either fill in the subtle tooth of the paper or it will warp the paper especially with this being so lightweight it will warp it and dissolve that paper um, and then, uh, the other con I can really think of is that this, this paper isn't really great for like archival pieces. Um, I've, I haven't really seen any other artists use this for pieces that they want to have around for a long time. It's typically almost always just sketching. Um, if you're just a beginner or you're planning on storing your paper in like a file folder and it's not going to be exposed to light, it's not really that big of a deal. It's just more of an issue when you are wanting to sell your artwork um, and kind of break into more of the professional aspect of it and you want your paper to last. So those are the cons of this paper. So I really recommend this paper for beginners if you're looking for some pastel paper for your kids or if you're looking for something you can experiment on. Here's the final apple done with the Strathmore paper and I think it turned out really nice. Next up 
is watercolor paper. I am going to be doing this demo using Arches cold press paper, but you can use most any watercolor paper with your pastels. How textured it is will depend on uh, two things. Um, if it's hot press, cold press, or rough press paper. So that's the texture that they put on the paper. Hot press tends to be the smoothest. Cold pressed is kind of middle ground. And then rough paper, the name suggests, it is a lot more rough and bumpy of a paper. The other thing that will affect it is brand. How rough a cold pressed paper or how smooth it is or how rough a hot pressed paper or how smooth it is will depend on the brand and how they manufacture the paper individually. Um, like Strathmore 400 watercolor paper it has a lot smoother of a texture in cold press than Arches cold press paper. So some of that will depend on the individual paper and the company made. I'm planning on doing a whole video just reviewing different types of watercolor paper and brands and how they perform with watercolor papers. Um, with this demo, Arches watercolor paper tends to be a lot more coarse um, and bumpy, um, which is fantastic with watercolors. And I really like it with um, pastel work, especially if I don't want it to be a super smooth, highly detailed picture. I want it, if I want it to be a little bit more impressionistic and just give the vibe of what I'm painting, then I really, really like this uh, paper. Another pro is that this paper can take an underpainting. It's like it's designed to take a watercolor painting because it's watercolor paper. Um, but this paper is really, really nice to do like an underpainting on. Um, some artists do like a really intense in detail watercolor painting for their underpainting and then they just add details with pastels at the end. Um, uh, I've seen other artists, they might just do a whole wash of a specific color and then paint over the top using pastels. So there's quite a spectrum in how you can do your underpaintings on this paper. Um, it, and a lot of it's just personal preference, but it can handle that underpainting, which is really great. Price point will depend a lot on your brand of watercolor paper you're using. Arches is a really expensive brand, and so it will cost a lot more per paper. But if you go with something like Strathmore 400 watercolor paper, you might get a different result than what I'm getting, but it's a lot more inexpensive to use. So some of that will just depend on the brand you choose. I kind of touched on this a little bit, but with this paper being so coarsely textured, specifically Arches cold press watercolor paper, it can take more layers and more blending and all that kind of stuff than the other papers mentioned. The great thing with watercolor paper also is that it um, comes in different weights. So you can get 140 pound weight paper or 300 pound weight paper, or even if you want something really thin and light, you can get 90 pound weight paper. And so you can adjust your paper based off of what your need is. What are some cons with watercolor paper? Well, if you're not the type of person to want to do an underpainting or to tone your paper yourself, this paper can be frustrating. Um, a lot of artists don't like working on bright white background unless it's with watercolor. Um, with pastels, oil paints, acrylics, all those things, you'll generally see an artist tone their paper. And if you don't want to have to tone your paper or your canvas, then something like this will be frustrating. Um, because this bright white paper can be a lot of work to work against. Um, I had to do a lot more layers um, for this demo just to get rid of the white on the apple. And I had to do a lot more blending to fill in the tooth of the paper on the apple. Um, I don't mind the bright white like in the background because it makes it look kind of sparkly. That's what's great about pastels is getting that kind of textured sparkle effect. 
But if you aren't wanting that, or if you want that to be a different color, then this paper can be frustrating. Another con can be the price, especially with arches. Arches watercolor paper is quite expensive. And so you might feel a little bit more intimidated trying to paint on it because of the price point. But if you choose a different brand of watercolor paper that's less expensive, then it won't be as much of a con. One thing great about arches that I forgot to mention earlier is that this is archival quality paper. So if you want to sell this in a gallery or you want this to last the test of time, this paper will do that. It's not just acid free. It's 100% cotton. It's not going to fade. It's not going to change colors. This paper is fantastic for this. So here is the final pastel demo on the arches paper. And you can see there's a lot more texture to the picture and there's not as nice of clean, sharp lines. And that's from all of that texture. Now we are jumping into the sanded paper categories. Remember, sanded paper is where you have a paper and the texture is glued onto it. So the first step in this category is pastel matte paper. This is an acid-free paper and it is the weight of it is 170 pounds, so it's nice and thick and sturdy to work on. And with sanded papers, you'll have one side with the texture that you'll, you can draw on and then the other side you can't draw on. And you can tell that with this paper because one side is colored and it has like a velvety texture and the other side is kind of like a high gloss smooth paper. Um, pastel matte paper comes in packs. Um, you can buy kind of variety packs. So I have one pack that's more cons of this paper. One of the pros is that it comes in a wide variety of colors. So you can choose a piece of that really fits what you're trying to create. Um, you can do light washes on this. I wouldn't recommend doing like a heavy watercolor wash on this, but you can do some ink underpaintings and a little bit of like a watercolor wash. I really, really like this picture or this type of paper when I want to do like a portrait or something with a really velvety smooth um, finish because this paper is just so velvety. It's dreamy because feeling it, you wouldn't be able to think that it could take as many layers as it can, but it can take more layers than the, than the embossed pictures that we looked at. And you can get a super, super fine and detailed finish on it. And I, I really, really love this about that paper. I like how in the packs, each sheet is divided by glassine paper, which is kind of like a almost like an artist grade wax paper. Um, I don't know exactly how it's made, but it, it doesn't, it's non-static and it doesn't pick up any of the, the pigments that are on underneath it. And so when you draw a piece, uh, a draw a painting, you have a piece of glassine that you can tape over the top and protect your picture, which most of the other papers don't come with any, well, none of the other ones come with any kind of protector with it. You have to find a way to protect it on your own. And what are some cons with this paper? Um, some of it again is just preference and some of it are actual like universal drawbacks. Um, you can't do a really, really heavy wash with this. So that can be a pro or con depending on what your style is. Um, another really big con is availability. Um, I have not seen this available in any of my local art supply stores and like whether it's big box or more specialty stores, this is something I've had to order online. Um, I usually buy my art supplies from places like Dick Blick uh, or like Jerry's Artorama um, because they tend to have the most options and the best prices. Another drawback with this paper is it is the most expensive um, 
even with arches. If you're buying arches online, like from Dick Blick, then it's a lot more money than that. If you're buying your arches paper from like Michael's, then it's comparable in price. But price is definitely an issue. So who would I recommend this paper for and what do I use it for? I use this again for a lot of portraiture or anything I want to get really like fine details on because it's just so smooth and it allows me to layer up the colors so well that I can really manipulate that pigment and get it exactly how I want. This like little sketch picture isn't necessarily the greatest example of that because I only spent 20 minutes drawing this apple, but you can really build up your colors and really manipulate them how you want. Um, I would recommend this paper for people that are experienced in pastels and really are comfortable working with them um, because of that price point issue and availability. Um, this is something I don't pull out all the time. It's something I keep for special occasions. I did make a sketchbook using this paper um, for a pastel sketchbook. Um, and I really like it for that because it's so sturdy that it it handles being in that sketchbook. And I have the glassine paper protecting each individual layer. So I really like it for that. Um, but it is a fantastic paper. It's probably one of my top three papers um, that I've ever used for pastels, but the price point is an issue. Another thing to be aware of with this picture, I just realized it while I was editing the video, is that it is more prone to getting indents in the paper, which indents can make it so it's harder to fill in the tooth of that paper. And so you can see like the lines from where I drew out the apple, um, that paper is indented in those areas. And so it was a lot harder to fill in. I could have filled them in. I was just in a hurry and I didn't notice it quite as extensively as I did now that I'm editing and staring at it for way too long. But this is the final apple. I really, really like this paper. And I, I know I just talked about how much I like it, but I really enjoy working on this paper. And you can see I got a lot smoother of a detail and layers than I did on the previous, uh, previous uh, demonstrations. Our fifth paper is Art Spectrum's Color Fix Paper. This is also a sanded paper. It's acid-free and archival, so it's light fast. It's 100% cotton. This is a great paper. Um, I think it comes from Australia, if I remember right. Um, the weight of this paper is 130 pounds, so it's nice and thick. It's not as rigid as the pastel matte paper. The pastel matte paper is like made with like a cardstock backer. So even though it's not as heavy of a weight, it's very rigid, which is why I put it in my sketchbooks. But this paper is, is a nice thick weight. And one thing I love about this paper is it has kind of that white um, border around it, which makes it really easy when framing your picture because you have a like an edge automatically to mount it to. Another thing is it makes it nice to get to the edge of your paper. So sometimes when you have your board mounted to like a like a foam core board so that you can have it on your easel or just have it easier to move around, your tape can block um, where you're going to mount it to. And so sometimes you have to peel back your tape and paint under it and then put it back on and having that nice clean border makes it really easy to get your pastels right to the edge so you don't get any weird halo effects. Other things I like about this paper, I love that it's archival, um, which I already mentioned, and I like that it can take a watercolor wash, uh, it can take an ink underpainting if I want to do ink, it can take an alcohol wash. So if I want to 
paint with or uh, put on a layer of pastels and then blend it with rubbing alcohol this can handle that um, it has a nice kind of sp spread out texture that isn't like super uniform so it creates a little dimension and interest um, what are some other things I love about this, this paper? I love the variety of colors it comes in. And I love that you can order, like from places like Dick Blick, you can or order bulk of a specific color in a specific size. So if you're doing a series of paintings and you want to have them all have the same under um, painting or the same like tone of paper for that series, so you have some harmony through them, you can order bulk amounts of this paper in that color and in your specific size. So I, I love that about this paper. Some cons. It's kind of a bummer that it only comes in one texture. Um, pastel matte comes in only one texture as well. But this paper has a little bit more coarse of a texture. So I tend to only use it when I'm doing like landscapes and things like that that are really needing more of a texture. But if it came in a more fine texture, I might pull, pull this paper more often for other projects. And another uh, caution with this is that the border can get torn up with tape pretty easily. I've, even when I'm using like really like low tack tape, um, I've noticed the border can tear and so I use photo corners and like plastic mounting strips to attach it to my board that way I don't have to worry about it tearing as much um, other cons um, and this is just a con in general with sanded papers they are more money than the embossed paper but this is a pretty inexpensive one especially with it being like an Australian brand in the US um, it is like only a little bit more than our next brand which is the cheapest um, sanded paper um, this sanded paper another con is it's not as common in art stores and that's another thing that's kind of across the board with pastels or this with the sanded pastel papers is you unless you're going to like an in-person Dick Blick art store or something that specializes more in pastels sanded paper can be a little trickier to find I've seen that it's starting to become more popular um, especially with like pencil artists like that work in colored pencils and things like that so hopefully it will become more widely available but it's just not as common in big box stores like Michael's and, and like Hobby Lobby and stuff. At least in the U.S., that's where my references are from. But I really enjoy this paper. It, I have big old sheets of it um, under my bed um, for some big landscape pieces that I work on. And if you're in the U.S. and you're looking for a place to buy it, at least last time I bought it, Dick Blick, and I'm not affiliated with Dick Blick, but Dick Blick was the best place to order it from, and you could get a bulk discount if you wanted to order a lot of sheets. So you can see that really like kind of random more rough texture on this in the background compared to like the pastel matte paper it has a lot more coarse of a texture but it's not so coarse i can't get fine details and markings um, within the apple and i love that about this paper is it's kind of a nice balance Okay, we are on our last paper to review today. And I think, I like to think I saved the best for last. This is UART um, sanded paper, and this is my number one go to paper for pastels and even colored pencils. Um, I'll get more into that in a minute, but this paper is available in black and cream. 
and it's archival, acid-free, fade-resistant, and incredibly durable. The texture of the paper ranges from 240 to 800 grit. So you can choose how coarse or smooth you want your paper to be, which you can't do with almost any other brand of pastel paper I've seen. Um, it's, the rating is similar to just traditional sandpaper where the smaller the number, the more coarse the tooth or the bite of the paper is, and the bigger the number, the more smooth it is. So just something to keep in mind. So why do I love this paper? I love this paper because one, it is probably the most or one of the most affordable soft pastel sanded papers on the market. You can find it in a lot of bulk options. So places like Dick Blick, you can get a discount for buying multiples of the same sheets um, in the same size. You can get, get it in a roll. So you can buy a giant roll of this and cut it to whatever size you want. You can buy it pre-mounted. And so that flexibility to get what you want and have it be affordable is amazing. Now remember, sanded paper does cost more than the cotton papers that are embossed. But this is a very affordable option. It's a little bit less than the color fix paper on Dick Blick. Um, another thing I love about this paper and part of what makes it so affordable is it's super, super durable. So this paper, if you start a pastel picture and you don't like how it's going and you just want to scrap it, this paper, instead of throwing it away, you can run it under water and take like an old brush and kind of scrub at it. And all that, pa a lot of that pastel will wash away. You can then let it dry and you can work right over the top. So there might be some residue from the pastel, but it's something that you can easily cover and this paper can withstand that scrubbing and the washing, which is really unheard of. This paper can take a, a wide variety of washes. So you can do inks and you can do watercolor and you can do alcohol washes underneath it and it doesn't affect, affect, affect it at all. Um, you can use this with not only your pastels, you can also use it with um, colored pencils, which I often do. Sometimes I'll use them together, especially if I'm going to do something like a portrait. Um, what else do I love about this paper? It's just a dream to work on. It's got a nice velvety smooth texture, um, especially if you get the smaller grits. I typically work between 400 and 500 grit. But I've bought all the different grits and used them for different projects. I go with the more coarse one for landscapes and the small, the higher number grit or the smoother grit um, or smoother texture um, for things that are more refined and more realistic like a portrait what are some drawbacks to the UART paper? Um, the biggest one is, it, and it's just a standard across the board pastel problem is, or sanded paper problem is that it's just a little bit more money per sheet. And it, the UART paper can kind of roll. It's not like the paint is causing a ton of warping or anything like that. It's just, especially because I buy it, I have a giant roll of it under my bed, and so I'm cutting it off this big roll. It can kind of take a little bit for it to start laying down flat. So I just have to use more things to kind of mount it to the board as I'm working. But it's not that really big of a deal, and it doesn't bother me. I like how it has um, that cream background. Because I don't really like working straight from white. And so I like how even though it's light, it's a lighter background, it's not pure white. And then I can tone it to whatever color I want. But if you're someone that likes to have a lot of those colored background options to help aid you in your artwork, 
this is and you don't like toning your paper very much this might not be the best option for you they released black pastel paper a couple years ago and it works really good if you like that high contrast look or you want that really dark background and then to build up your lights from um, I've used it a few times it just doesn't really fit my style but it is fun for different effects so I keep a few sheets around just in case so this paper I'm using is 400 grit paper and you can see that I'm able to get a lot of details on it get a smooth finish but I'm also able to have the background have that rough kind of unfinished look as well and I didn't have to do a ton of layers to get to that point. So here are the finished Apple demos. Um, on the left, there's Strathmore, UR, and Pastel Matte. And on the right, there's Arches, Canson, and Color Fix. And you can see the variation in how the type of paper, whether it's sanded or embossed paper, and the texture of those affects the end results. I think in general, the sanded paper allows you to do the most layers and still get fine details better than the embossed papers, but a lot of this is just personal preference in what you want to achieve. I hope you found this video helpful in deciding which pastel papers you want to try next. And if you did, please hit the like button, and if you want to see more pastel videos or on a specific topic, please leave a comment down below so that way I know what to create. Have a great day. Bye.